sunrise and sunset, promise and fulfillment, birth and death. The whole drama of life is written in the sands of time. We present the new series of radio programs, The Clock. Am I disturbing you? I hope not. I don't mean to intrude. I just dropped in for half an hour with a story. It's not an ordinary story, and yet it might easily happen to someone you know. Someone you may have heard of. In any case, I'm pretty certain you'll be glad you listened. But perhaps I'd better introduce myself again, although we have met before. You don't remember? (laughs) Oh, come now. We're old friends. You must have seen my face on your wrist, in your pocket, or on that steeple over there where I suppose I have more dignity but much less fun. Yes, we've met before, and we'll meet again, I'm sure of that. You see, I get around. Sooner or later, I run into everyone. Sooner or later, everyone runs into me. But I was telling you about my story, which has to do with Jeannie Clare. Jeannie's a pretty girl of 23 and rather nice. She had a birthday just a month ago, and it was a very happy affair. Some of the girls who worked with Jeannie at Kane's department store threw the party, and they all had a wonderful time. But that was a month ago, and things are different now. Precinct police stations are not exactly pleasant places, especially for girls like Jeannie Clare. The desk sergeant's always impersonal and efficient, but sometimes even efficiency can be a frightening thing. How long will it take, sergeant? Oh, about 20 minutes. As long as it takes him to get down and back. 20 minutes? Mm, 20 minutes. In the meantime, I want to ask you a couple of questions. Now, Jeannie Clare, 1148 Stemina. Is that right? That's right. Now, what's your age? 23. Blue eyes... Brown hair. Height? Five feet two. Weight? 110 pounds without my shoes. Mm Mm-hmm, 110. Married? No. No, I'm not married. Mm. Occupation? Occupation. Yeah, where where, where do you work? At Kane's department store. I sell gloves, men's gloves. That's where it started, at Kane's. Yes, that's where it started, at Kane's. It had been a long, long afternoon behind the counter, and the girls were glad to hear the closing bell. Oh, saved by the bell. I was just ready to pass out with exhaustion. Oh, my feet are killing me, Jeannie. You make out your sales tally, Ethel. Oh, you think I got eight hands like an octopus? I'm just starting now, and I better hurry. I got a date with Harry. Oh? Oh, uh, you want to come along? You and Harry? Yeah, he could get another guy. Oh, thanks, Ethel, but not tonight. Say, what? goes with you. Don't you ever want to have any fun? I like my fun, same as anyone else. Only, well, not tonight, Ethel. Not tonight, not tomorrow night, not next month. Are you waiting for the perfect man? Maybe. Ah, there ain't no such animal. Ah, but you can't be too particular, Jeannie, unless you want to sell gloves for old man Martin for the rest of your life. You take Harry, for instance. He's no Van Johnson, but he's got his point. Harry's nice, but he's not my type. Now, who is your type, that Johnson? I'm not interested so much in looks as I am in character. I want to marry a man, Ethel, a human being, not a collar ad. Oh, what do you think Harry is, a horse? Oh, you don't know what I mean. You see, Ethel, I never had much education. So my man's got to be smart. He's got to have manners, too, smart manners, like they have in France. He won't look silly, for instance, when he kisses my hand. <laughs> what else? He'll dress in taste. Not like a clothes horse, but like a gentleman. He'll be interested in good books and classical music. He'll take me to the art galleries and explain what the pictures mean. And when he talks, his voice will be soft and gentle. And clever. Like a man of the world. I beg your pardon. Uh, What? Uh, May I see those gloves, please? They're on the first shelf. I'm sorry, mister. The store's closed. Oh, that's... Too bad. It's, it's all right, Ethel. I'll open up my book again and, and take care of the gentleman. No, it's your time. <laughs> That's awfully kind of you. I, I hope I'm not putting you to too much trouble. No. No trouble at all. Is something wrong? Uh, wrong? The way you stare at me. My tie? Oh, that... excuse me. I, 
I was just thinking of something. <laughs> hey, are these the gloves you mean? Uh, yes, please. Seven ninety eight plus tax. All right, they're extremely smart. Yeah, they're good looking, all right. What is your size? Eight and a half. These ought to fit. May I try them on? Oh, sure. And take your time. I'm in no hurry. I'm in no hurry at all. Jeannie could hardly believe it. There he was, the man she'd always dreamed about, standing right in front of her. He wasn't handsome, but he was tall, and his clothes were neat. Jeannie always used to think a derby hat was rather silly on a man, but on this one, it was different. Everything seemed so different about him. And his voice. Well, when Jeannie heard his voice, the picture was complete. And what a wonderful picture it was. But then Jeannie remembered that he'd buy his gloves, he'd pay for them, and she'd never see him again. She tried to think of something to say to keep him there. But he only smiled politely, made his purchase, and walked away. And Jeannie felt she was watching him walk right out of her life. Jeannie! Huh? Hey, what are you dreaming about? I... Nothing. Did you make the sale? Yeah. Yeah, I made the sale. Hey, look! He forgot his wallet! Wallet? Yeah, on the counter over here. Oh, I'll take care of it. Give it to me. Hey, hey, what's your hurry? Uh, see if it's got any identification. Well, well there's a card in here and a license. Huh? His name is Courtney. Keith Courtney. Huh? Pretty fancy. You better turn that over to the section manager. Oh, it's all right, Ethel. I can handle it. Why? Oh, just to make sure he gets it, I'll, uh, I'll deliver it myself. The young man's address was in the 40s, a small hotel. Not an elegant place, Jeannie thought, but dignified. She waited in the lobby while the desk clerk called his room. It only took him two minutes to come down, but sometimes two short minutes can seem like two long years. Good evening. You, you remember me? <laughs> of course. You are the charming young lady who waited on me in the store. <laughs> You're kind of absent-minded, aren't you? I am. You left this wallet on the counter. Oh, oh! thank you. Thank you so much. I, I thought I'd lost it. You know, that's happened to me once before. I really should be more careful. You really should. There wasn't much money in it, but uh, there were the pictures. Of my family, you see. I would have hated to lose those snapshots. Well, you got them back now. So I guess I'll go... Uh, no, just, just a minute, please. You, you've gone to a great deal of trouble to return this to me. Oh, that's all right. When one returns a wallet, there's usually a reward. Well, in this case, we might reverse the procedure. I don't get it. I'd reap the reward myself if you'd have dinner with me. Or have you made a previous appointment? No, I... I haven't got anything much to do. Then you'll accept? Oh, Sure. I mean, how oh, sure. He took Jeannie to a little Italian place on 46th. But Jeannie could hardly think of food. She just kept listening to his voice and watching him smile as he told her all about himself and about his work. He wanted to be an actor, or, oh, ever since he could remember. And he was looking for a break. He didn't want to be a movie star and make a lot of money. Shakespeare and Ibsen were more his style. He said right now he wasn't working. He was at liberty and available for the right part. Jeannie crossed her fingers and hoped that he was at liberty and available for the right girl. After dinner, they took a walk. And Jeannie noticed how he always tried to keep on her left or right, whichever was nearest to the street. Other men she'd met were never quite so thoughtful. But then Keith wasn't like other men. And Jeannie knew that from the moment she saw him. Jeannie? Yes, Keith? It's been a wonderful evening. Yes. You know, somehow it's been perfect. Nothing has spoiled it. For me. Or for me. Jeannie, may I see you again? You... You really want to? Very much. All right. <laughs> Tomorrow night? <laughs> That's kind of soon, isn't it? Too soon for you? No. It's not too soon for me. Then we have a date. Tomorrow night and... I hope for many nights to come. For many nights to come. That sounded wonderful to Jeannie Clare. It sounded like forever. But she didn't know that forever could be a very short time. Jeannie saw him every night for four weeks in a row. They went everywhere together, to interesting places, to museums and art shows, a concert or two, every once in a while, the theater. 
Not a moving picture. The theater. The legitimate stage, as Keith put it. <laughs> when you've never been in love before and you meet the perfect man, you don't have to think very hard to find out where you stand. After a while, Jeannie stopped telling herself to be sensible and to wait. She was crazy about him, that was that. And then one day, he got a job. He wanted to celebrate and treat Jeannie to something special. They had dinner and danced a lot, then took the subway home. Jeannie, I've got something to tell you. Really, Keith? First of all, let me say that you're the nicest girl I ever met in my life. Keith. And you understand me more than anyone else I've ever known. Jeannie, I haven't let our relationship get too personal up to now because... Well, somehow I felt I didn't have a right to. You shouldn't have felt like that. Oh, well. well. It was mostly money, I guess. I, I, I didn't have very much saved up. And an actor never knows when he's going to get another job. But you've got one now. Yeah. Oh, Jeannie, it's a wonderful party. You know, if this play clicks... Well, when and if that happens, Jeannie, I'll have something more to tell you. You uh, couldn't tell me now. Uh, 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 no, not just yet. But if you want to, you can guess and you'll probably be right. I, I think I know, Keith. I'm very glad. You know, sometimes I think I'm a very lucky girl, Keith. Why? Well, things happen if you wait for them long enough, and, and the things that happen are usually nice. Oh, not like that poor kid or whoever she was. What poor kid? See the paper that man is reading across the aisle? Oh, yeah? Look what that headline says. Young girl slain by maniac. Isn't it awful? Maybe it's selfish of me to say so. But I'm sure glad things like that only happen to other people. And I only have to read about them in the papers. I'm sure glad only nice things happen to me. When Keith said goodnight at the door, he bent down and kissed Jeannie's hand. And Jeannie seemed to know even before he did it that that was just the thing he'd do. When she got inside her room, she was much too excited to sleep. So she tried to read a while, and she opened the paper Keith had bought her as he left the subway. Then Jeannie saw that headline again. It gave a full description of the murder and where the victim was found. The girl was 24 and pretty. She'd been keeping company with an unknown man, and a description by one of the neighbors tallied with a description of a maniac who killed another girl a week before. The description followed, and Jeannie read it aloud to herself. I see Ken, nice looking, dressed in perfect taste. He flatters the girls he meets with his continental manners. And his voice is low and soft. He, he's never seen without a derby hat. His gloves are always new. And by profession, he claims to be an actor. <laughs> You know, there are people in the world who never grow old, even though they live to be a hundred years old. Somehow they shoulder their cares very lightly, and their minds remained young and strong. Jeannie Clare's mind was young and it was strong, but she grew up far beyond her years when she read that paper. She just sat there and shook her pretty head in a funny sort of a way. You could see she didn't want to believe what she read. She was trying to convince herself it was only a coincidence. Well, Jeannie, perhaps it is. There are many men who could answer that description, and lots of them could be actors. Only this particular man is the man you love. Remember that. But suddenly, Jeannie noticed another fact. The man they were after had come from Chicago. They traced him to New York from there. Well, that was different. Hadn't Keith told her his folks lived in St. Louis? Of course he had. At least twice. Jeannie laughed in relief. <laughs> then fell asleep on the couch from sheer nervous exhaustion. The next evening, as she and Keith walked up the street after dinner, Jeannie was ashamed of herself for ever having the thought she'd had. He was so tall and straight in his well-kept clothes, and she felt proud just to be walking by his side. Somehow he was even nicer than he'd ever been before. 
And he started to tell her about the play he was in. It was a melodrama, Jeannie. A what? You know, a play about crime. Oh. <laughs> Not the usual one, though. Well, I think it ought to be a hit. I hope so, Keith. <laughs> you know, I guess ordinarily I wouldn't have taken a part like that. Ah, you know the way I am, Jeannie. I worship Shakespeare. I, I'd rather... I'd rather carry a sword in Hamlet than have a lead in any comedy in town. But, uh... I don't know. This part should give me the foothold I need. And, uh, at least I'll start to make enough money to plan for the future. You... You mean you took this part just for me, Keith? <laughs> well, let's say I took it for both of us, and we'll let it go at that, huh? Hey, would you like to see a rehearsal one day? Oh, I sure would. <laughs> you won't let it scare you, I hope. Scare me? Well, the play is pretty violent. Like's quite a shock. You see, it involves a homicidal maniac, a man who likes to kill for pleasure. Huh? It's got... You dropped your purse. Hey, Jeannie, you've broken your mirror. Keith? Yes, Jeannie? Someday I... I'd like to meet your folks. Someday you shall, Jeannie. I... I know St. Louis is a long way off, but... St. Louis? Oh, they don't live there anymore. But, but you told me. Oh, they were born there. Oh, yeah. But a couple of years ago, they moved, Jeannie. They did? To where? Chicago. Chicago. It couldn't have been Los Angeles or Salt Lake City. It had to be Chicago. And Jeannie almost felt she was going to be sick. She managed to keep herself composed until they said goodnight, though. Keith was due at rehearsal at eight, so he didn't take her home. And Jeannie was never so glad to get back to her room in her life. She sat down near the radio and tried to catch her breath. Her head was pounding and she could hardly think. She kept saying over and over to herself, is Keith the man they want? She couldn't turn him in unless she was sure. And how could she be sure? Then she turned the radio on. She didn't know exactly why. She was frightened, lonesome, miserable. She wanted to hear a voice, any voice, someone who'd talk to her so she'd know she wasn't alone. She heard a voice all right. And the words burned holes in her heart. And the United Nations will discuss the matter during the next session. New York. The police have unearthed new evidence concerning the homicidal maniac who has gone as claimed three victims thus far. He apparently was able to hoodwink his unhappy victims into believing he'd fallen in love with them and was about to propose marriage. No. The police are hoping to apprehend the killer before he has a chance to add another victim to his list. Operator, get me the police department. <laughs> She gave them her name and told them where he worked. He'd be at the theater now, she said, in rehearsal. They promised to send a squad car and a detective over to her place in 15 minutes for her protection. 15 minutes. That wasn't long by the usual standards. But as Jeannie hung up, she began to experience the most harrowing 15 minutes of her life. Huh? Jeannie! Jeannie, you're there! An hour ago, I was worried. You behaved so strangely. I, I thought of calling you. Then decided to come instead. And just talk to you. But what about rehearsal, Keith? Oh, that. <laughs> well, I rehearsed for ten minutes and I left the theater. Well, don't worry. I, I promised I'd be back in an hour or two. Anyway, I'm, I'm not in the second act of it. Jeannie. Yes. What's the matter? Why do you keep moving away from me like that? I haven't been moving Jeannie. away. What's happened? Why do you stare at me? At it? Almost as though you're afraid. I, I wish you'd leave me alone for a while. Just a little while, Keith. I, Jeannie, I, you've got to tell I, me what's wrong. Has it been because... Because I haven't asked you to marry me yet? No, no, it's not that. Jeannie, come here. Jeannie had moved to the other end of the room and her back was against the wall. Fifteen minutes, they told her. It would take a detective fifteen minutes to arrive, but fifteen minutes might be too late. Keith kept coming closer, smiling, talking, his hands and arms stretched out. Then she saw a bulge in his right-hand coat pocket, and she knew it was a gun. Jeannie, darling, what's the matter? You mustn't be afraid of me. His hands were on her shoulders now, and he was pulling her close. For a moment, she could hardly breathe. And then she let him kiss her. 
She had to because she wanted to get hold of that gun. Oh, gee. Inch by inch, her hand crept toward his pocket. And then inside, she felt the trigger and then the handle. And with all the strength she had left, she pulled it out and fired. <laughs> For the love of Mike, take it easy. A masher! I tell you, he's a maniac. Maybe he's not, lady, but he ain't the guy we're looking for. What? A guy? We caught that girl killer half an hour ago. Jeannie just stood there and looked at him. The words just didn't sink in. And then she started to laugh. She laughed and she couldn't control herself. She laughed until she cried. For it was then that Jeannie realized that she had killed the wrong man. Hey, miss. Hey, miss, hang on to yourself. I'm sorry, Sergeant. I... Hey, yes, that officer must have thought that I was the one who, who was crazy when he brought me here. Yeah, well, now we'll see when he gets back. Just relax. Take it easy. Yeah. What? Did you say something, Sergeant? No, I didn't. Uh, look behind you. Genius. Here's your cop, Sarge. Only he ain't so stiff. He walked down here by himself. And there's the rod. Filled with blanks. Can you beat it? Huh? It's just a prop we use in the play. I guess I forgot to leave it at the theater tonight when I left the rehearsal. When you fired it, Jeannie, I... Must have got such a shock I passed out. I... I can't believe it. Hey, hey. It's all right, Jeannie. It's all right. I know what happened. It's all right now. Come on, Jeannie. I'll take you home. That's the story of Jeannie Clare as recorded by The Clock. Well, I see we've used up our allotted span, for the clock keeps running. And the hands keep moving around. So, good people, accept each minute with gratitude and with joy. Time is good to most of you, and most of you make good use of time. But remember, it's later than you think, so use your time well this week. And return again to listen to The Clock. The clock will be heard again next week, same time, same station. This program is written by Lawrence Clee, and you heard Hart McGuire as the clock. And as Jeannie, Wendy Playfair. As Keith, John Mellion. Others in the cast were Joan Lander, Derek Barnes, and Joe McCormick. The clock is directed by John Saul, a Grace Gibson radio production.